Okay, and welcome to Project 4. In this project, you're going to get a chance to draw your own airplane in Fusion 360 and then prepare a wind tunnel model that's suitable for 3D printing and could go into our subsonic wind tunnel. And the goal of this project is to really to set you up for success in our capstone design sequence when you're going to be designing aircraft in Jet 10. And you're going to want to put those aircraft in the wind tunnel and be able to get uh, the basic aero data on the aircraft. So hopefully this will set you up for success with that. I've got... Uh, a model here that I drew already for this project. I'm going to draw a different one though going through the videos and walk you through how to draw your own aircraft as well. Here's the project handout and basically split up into uh, four parts where we're going to create a wing first then the tail and then we'll create the fuselage and then we'll prepare it all for uh, 3D printing of a wind tunnel model. Okay, So I'm going to go to Fusion 360 here and I'm going to click the new design button to get a new model going. I'm going to turn on the origin so I can have a look around and I'm going to save this because um, I don't want to get to the point where I haven't saved it and I'm three quarters of the way through making it. And I'm going to hide the data panel now and now I can get to work on the model. Part of the goal of this is to create the model with parameterized dimensions so that we can come back later and just change that parameter and see the change on the wing instead of having to redraw or recreate the whole wing manually. So the first thing I'm going to do is to create those parameters that can define the shape of the wing. And the first one is, of course, the length of the root cord. So I'm going to use C sub R as the name for this parameter. I'm going to put it in in feet, and I'm going to set it equal to 12.3 feet. And then I need to define the tip cord. I'll also use feet, and I'll use 5 feet for the tip cord. Now, the way that we're going to create this model is by lofting the root airfoil to the tip airfoil and then mirroring it over to the other half. So um, I also need the half span dimension which I'll put in in feet as 11 feet. The last thing I need to define the uh, shape of the wing is the leading edge sweep and this will be in degrees and I'll put in 18 degrees for this. Okay so there's my uh, parameters that I need. The next thing that I need is to actually bring in the uh, airfoil that can define the root and the tip. And there's two different ways to bring in an airfoil into Fusion 360 and I'll show you both of them. The first way is to come over here to Utilities, go to Add-ins, Scripts and Add-ins, and then import a spline as a, a, from a CSV file. So if we have a CSV file with our coordinates, we can bring it in as a spline. So all we need to do to make this successful is to get a CSV file with our airfoil coordinates. An easy way to do that is to go to airfoiltools.com and search for the airflow that you want to use. I'm going to use a 0006 uh, NACA airfoil because I'm trying to make a higher speed fighter type aircraft. So I'll search for that airfoil and here it is here. And here's the um, shape of the airfoil. Airfoil Tools has all the um, curves for the airfoil, CL, CD, CM curves uh, from various sources. And I'm going to highlight these coordinates here because these define the actual coordinates of my airfoil that I want. Okay, and I copied those and then I'm going to paste them into a spreadsheet. When they come into the spreadsheet here, it's all going to be in, combined in one column. I need to separate it into two columns. So I'll go to data, text to columns, fixed width. I'll set my separator right there, click finish. Now I have two columns of data. I need to create, uh, delete this first row there because we only want numbers in here defining the airfoil. And I need to create a third row of the Z coordinate. This is X, Y, Z. And so I'll set the Z coordinates equal to zero. Now I've got the coordinates defining my airfoil. I can confirm it by highlighting these two rows, going to insert a scatter chart. And if I drew this chart to be the right proportion, you would see it looks like a triple zero six. One thing that I want to notice on this chart though is the trailing edge. The trailing edge is actually not connected. There's two different points here. And so this first point of, on my coordinates is actually at an x coordinate of 1 and a y coordinate of 0.63. The rest of the coordinates go around the loop counterclockwise until I end back at 1 at minus 0 0.00063. Uh, and so if I import this path into Fusion, I won't have a closed loop sketch. So I won't, won't be able to loft it or do anything with it. So what I want to do is put zeros here for these starting and ending coordinates and now those two points came together in one point and now I'll have a closed loop sketch 
in Fusion 360. Okay, and I want to save this as a comma separated variable file, a CSV file, and hit save. Now I've got that CSV file that I need to import in Fusion. So if I go back to Fusion, add ins, scripts and add ins, go down to import spline CSV, and run this tool. Now I select that airfoil file, CSV file I just saved, and here's my CSV file. Okay. Uh, now I you can notice here that it's kind of on the bottom plane facing up and so I'm going to change the plane that it's on just so it, it uh, is facing out to the right. So if I find this sketch, right click on it, redefine sketch plane, I can change it to this sketch plane and now it is uh, kind of up and down on the XZ plane and facing out to the right which is where my wingtip will be. So, Okay, so now I'll show you the second way to import an airfoil and that's by going to add-ins and going to the Fusion 360 App Store. If I click on that, it takes me to the store on the web. And now if I search the Fusion apps for airfoil, uh, the first one that pops up is the airfoil generator. And if I click on this, I can download this and install it in Windows just like any other uh, Windows installer. When I do that, um, I can come back to Fusion and go back to the solid modeling, create a new sketch, and that's the wrong sketch plane. I'm going to delete that sketch and create a new sketch on the correct sketch plane. And now, under this Create menu, I have a new option for an airfoil. If I click on that airfoil, it allows me to type in an airfoil profile. I'm going to use a triple, triple 006. Um, it defaults to 120 points per side. That gets pretty uh, computationally intensive when you're trying to lot it and stuff. So I'll take it down to 60 points. And um, I found this half cosine spacing produces a little better uh, curvature around the leading edge. So if I press OK there and finish sketch, I can see that other airfoil profile came in on the bottom plane, but it's sure it uh, it is a triple zero six. Now I can delete the intermediate sketch that I had to use to get to the airfoil tool because I don't didn't need that. All right now I've got two airfoils here. I'm going to redefine the sketch plane of this uh, this one to be the same as the first one. All right, and I've got both of my airfoils on top of each other here. There are some differences in these methods. Um, the uh, airfoil tool, the airfoil generator app, produced a little bit uh, chunkier, more jagged leading edge. But uh, I can always increase the points if I needed to, and, and it has a lot more points, which is going to be a little bit harder on my computer uh, to loft and stuff. So I'm going to delete the airfoil generator one. It is a really handy way to generate an airfoil though. You can go ahead and try it um, and if I wasn't lofting it, it would probably be fine right now. So so here I am with the airfoil that I imported, imported from my CSV file. I'm going to rename this sketch to be my root airfoil sketch and I'm going to double click on this root airfoil sketch. I'm going to select all of the sketch points and press control C now I'm going to create a new sketch on that same plane and I'm going to press control V to paste that same airfoil into the exact same spot. So all I did was copy and paste the first sketch. Uh, I could have run the import spline CSV tool again, uh, but why bother when I can just copy and paste the sketch. So if I turn off my root airfoil sketch, I'll see I have another airfoil, exact same shape, same location and this is going to become my tip airfoil. So now I need to start to manipulate these to get them into the right size and shape to define the root and tip. And uh, the first thing I need to do is scale it. I need to scale the root airfoil first. I can use the modify scale command. I need to select the entity to scale, so I'll select it over here because the two sketches are very hard to select you know, manually right now because they're on top of each other. And that would produce funky results in this case anyway. So I'm going to select the whole thing right here. Now my scale factor is what I want it to be divided by what it currently is. So I need to know the current dimension. I'll use the inspect tool. Click on the leading edge and the trailing edge and it's 10 millimeters long. So I'm going to go back to scale entities, select the root airfoil and now I'm going to tell it to scale it to my desired value which is the root cord length that I defined the parameter for, divided by the current value, which is 10 millimeters. And now I've got my 
root airfoil, that's the right scale. Now I'll come back and do that again for my tip airfoil. I'm going to select the tip airfoil entity, I'm going to scale it to C sub T divided by 10 millimeters. And now I've got my tip airfoil. So now all I need to do is to actually place my tip airfoil out on a new plane that's half span away from my root airfoil. So to do that, I need to make a new construction plane. I click on the construct button, offset plane, and it's going to be offset from my XZ origin plane. And I can start to drag this, and I can place this plane wherever I want uh, with the mouse or by typing in a dimension. I'm going to type in the half span dimension. And now I've got my new construction plane out here, half span away from my root uh, airfoil. And I can you know, drag this around to make it easier to see because it's out far out there or whatever. So now I need to uh, redefine the sketch plane of my tip airfoil to be this new plane that I made out here. So if I right click on my tip airfoil and say redefine sketch, that construction plane disappeared. And that's because if I look at my timeline down here, I didn't make the construction plane until after I had made my tip airfoil sketch. So when I go back to modify my tip airfoil sketch, it's only aware of things prior to that in the timeline, and that construction plane didn't exist prior to my tip airfoil sketch in my timeline. But this construction plane is really easy to uh, rearrange in the timeline because it's not dependent on anything prior to it. So I can just click and drag it to before my tip airfoil. And then I can right click redefine sketch plane on my tip airfoil. Now the construction plane is there. Uh, as an option, I press OK. And there's my tip airfoil. Okay. So now I just need to move my tip airfoil back by a distance corresponding to my leading edge sweep. So if I highlight it, go move copy, start to drag it in that direction. And then if I type in half span times the tangent of my leading edge sweep, now I moved it back by the uh, exact amount needed to make that leading edge sweep that I wanted. And it's a little bit more than halfway and that looks good. The other thing I'm going to do is going to rotate my tip airfoil down by a couple degrees to give the wing a little bit of washout. And washout is when we reduce the angle of attack at the wing tip and this prevents the wing tip from stalling as quickly as the wing root. So by delaying stall at the wing tip we can keep the ailerons effective for longer which is better. So I'm going to click move copy again and uh, I'm, I'm going to set my pivot point to the trailing edge point and then I click the set pivot point again and now I can rotate this up and down and I'm going to rotate it down by minus two degrees and when I do that now I've got my tip airfoil which is at the right distance away from my root airfoil and it's rotated that down by two degrees so I'm ready to loft this I'll choose the loft tool up here I'll select the root airfoil and the tip airfoil and it will automatically try to loft between these two things but this is not a great loft as you can see there's some uh, curvature of the leading edge here and of the trailing edge and this is just the funky thing about the loft command it can get confused when it's trying to match up points mathematically between one loft surface and another so I'm going to cancel this and we need to draw a guide rail from the leading edge and between the leading edges and the trailing edges of both airfoils to kind of guide the loft so I'm going to click new sketch again I'm going to put this sketch on the origin and you'll see that I've got this 3D sketch button selected over here. I'm telling Fusion that I want to create a sketch that's not confined to the two-dimensional sketch plane. And now I can click the line tool, select the origin, and select the tip of the leading edge on the tip airfoil. And that gave me a line from the root airfoil to the tip airfoil. Now I'll create another line, same thing, but for the trailing edge between the root airfoil and the tip airfoil. And then I'll finish my sketch. And now I've got these lines between the root and the tip that'll, that'll help to guide the loft. So I can click on the loft button again, click the root, click the tip, and I come down here to rails and click the plus button. And now I can select these rails and they will guide the loft in the right place. If these rails are having trouble, you can try turning chain selection off, but this time it worked out fine. Okay. So now that is a great looking wing. The wing tip is angled down by two degrees. The leading edge is nice and straight if I kind of eyeball it like this. It looks nice and straight. The trailing edge is nice and straight if I eyeball it here. So that just looks great. Okay. 
The last thing I need to do to finish my whole wing is to mirror this. So I can go to Create Mirror. Um, I already have bodies selected here, but you need to watch out because it, I think it defaults to faces. And if you selected faces here, it'd just be trying to mirror a face. And I don't want to mirror a face, I want to mirror the whole body. So I can select the whole body, click the mirror plane as the XZ plane. It's giving me a preview of what the mirror is going to result in, and I want to join it is the operation I want to do. I press OK, and now I've got my whole wing. So that's the wing of my aircraft. Now I can come back to modify parameters, and if I want to change my wing afterwards, I can do it by typing in new values for these parameters. Let's say that I want to make my root cord 20 feet and my tip cord 10 feet and my half span 20 feet. I just totally changed the size and aspect ratio of my wing. Um, and it really didn't take anything more than typing in new numbers. Okay, uh, But I'm going to go back to what I started with, 12.3, 5, and 11. That's the wing that I want to stick with for now. Now the leading edge sweep. If I come in here and change the leading edge sweep, say I change it to 30 degrees, nothing happens. And that's because I used the leading edge sweep in a move command um, that wasn't recorded in a way that Fusion parameterized it. So if I want to change the sweep of my wing, what I need to do is come back in here to my tip airfoil, and I need to select that tip airfoil again, and I need to move it. And I can move it back however much I want to correspond to my new sweep. And I could use the leading edge sweep in that move command to calculate a new position. So the leading edge sweep didn't get totally parameterized. Uh, there are some shortcomings of those parameters in terms of where Fusion 360 records them or not. But I've got a great looking wing here. And uh, it's ready to be assembled with an aircraft. But first we need to make a tail. So that's what we'll do next time.